Hello, this is David Harper, Bionic Turtle, and I wanted to illustrate how we can calculate a forward rate given two spot rates. I did this screencast a couple of months ago. I wanted to improve it and show that we can do it in both discrete terms and continuous terms. So the assumptions are that we're given a two-year spot rate of 6% as indicated by the green arrow. Also, we're given a 18 month or one and a half year spot rate of 5%. So this would be like an upward sloping yield curve. And then what we'd like to solve for is the market implied forward rate that starts in 18 months and is a six month rate. So that's shown by the yellow bar. And again, that is a six month rate, but it starts in 18 months. So it's a six month forward rate. The idea as to why we can solve for the implied forward rate is that there ought to be no arbitrage opportunity assuming an efficient market and lacking some uh, friction assumptions. And so on the one hand we ought to be indifferent to whether we invest for two years at the 6% spot rate or the other way we could do this is invest for 18 months at the 5% spot rate and then roll that over into the forward rate that we were guaranteed here at the onset for six months. So rolling over the 18 into a new six month forward rate gets us to the end of two years. At least at the onset we ought to expect roughly the same deal here. That's the key to being able to solve for the market implied six month forward rate that starts in 18 months. So first let's apply the two year rate at six percent. To get that we could say 1 plus the 6 percent. Now I'm going to do what we typically do here which is convert to six month or semi-annual periods. So I'm going to divide that by 2. Having done that I now want to raise this to a power not of 2 for 2 years but 4 because there are 4 6 month periods in the 2 years. So this formula here compounds forward at a 6 percent stated annual rate over 4 periods but we're semi-annual compounding. Gets me my multiplier. And then I could just multiply my multiplier by my starting value. In this case I'm going to assume $100. And that tells me that $100 at the beginning grows to $112.55 if we use a spot rate of 6% and we compound semi-annually. Now I'll go down here to the alternative scenario where I can invest the 5% spot rate for 18 months. So as before, I'll divide that rate into 2 and I'm going to raise to power now to, and I'm going to raise to the third power to represent a compounding over 3 periods. That gets me the multiplier at the end of 18 months. Now I can solve for the implied forward, the implied 6 month forward, by dividing this multiplier that represents the 2 year spot by the multiplier that represents the 18 month spot and I get a number that includes a 1 so it's my percentage is in there but it just includes a 1 so I'm going to back out the 1 and now I have a 4.5 percent rate that's a 6 month rate though because I've been using semi-annual period so the final thing I need to do here is just multiply this by 2 that gives me the number that's the 9 percent that represents the market implied forward rate. And now I can really test to see whether that's true by applying the exercise of investing at the 5% spot rate. So I do that with a 1 plus 5%, but I'm going to divide the 5 by 2 to, to use the 6 month period. I'm doing that over 3 periods, and now I'm going to roll it over into the forward. So I just multiply it to roll it over. 1 plus that new forward rate that I just calculated, 9%. Got to divide that by 2 and close parens. So this simulates this bottom path of investing at the 5% spot for 3 periods and then rolling over into the forward rate of 9% for 1 period. Gets me my multiplier. Just to check my final value, I'll take the $100, multiply that, and we see that I got the same 
terminal value, $112.55 regardless. That verifies for me that this, that this would be the market implied forward rate. Okay, let's do, do the same thing real quickly with continuous compounding. And so in this case, now we're not going to compound semi-annually, but continuous compounding, which in some ways is even a little bit more compact. So now I'll do the 6% continuously compounded over two years. The formula for this is really just the exponential function, or e raised to the rate 6% times the number of years. That's how easy that part is. Multiply that by my starting value of 100. Tells me under continuously compounded, notice I get a slightly higher value, about 20 cents. This time, putting the money to get to work more frequently gets me to $112.75. Now, I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to continuously compound at the 5%, but that's not over two years. That's over one and a half years. That gets me the multiplier. Now I want to, again, solve for the implied forward rate under this assumption of continuously compounding. It's a similar idea, but I take the natural log because it's the inverse of the exponential function that we've been using. So I take the natural log of the two-year spot multiplier divided by the 18-month spot multiplier. If I were to finish there, I'd get the six-month implied forward rate. So again, I'm just going to annualize that or convert it to a bond on a bond equivalent basis gets me my market implied forward of nine percent and once again let me test that by doing this rollover so I'm gonna start with e raised or the exponential function of my five percent how long am I doing that for one and a half years I'm going to roll it over into the six month forward. So again, that's a multiplication exponential function of my 9%, but of only six months. So times 0.5 equals, I get the multiplier. Let's multiply that by the initial value. And I get $112.75 matches the terminal value. In this case, they're both a little bit higher than what I got on the discrete compounding, but the essential mechanics were the same. I'm able to use that two-year spot and that 18-month spot to solve for the implied six-month forward that starts in 18 months. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.